And the first thing they want you to do is mount the transformer. It's pretty much easy enough. So I got my uh, transformers mounted and my grommets here for the output transformer wires to go through. Of course power transformer wires are already in here where they need to be. Uh, something that uh, I just noticed, I don't know if you can see that, but the power transformer cover got a pretty good dent in it. Now that is just a cover uh, to protect the winding. I don't know if it's to protect the winding or protect you from the windings, but uh, I, I got to figure out whether I want to take that off and pound that back out or not. Um, I guess that's a decision for a later date. Now I've got two switches here. One's for the ground and one's for the power. So there's the uh, three big tube socket assemblies in. Um, sure helps if you have some little needle nose to hold on to those nuts on there. Anyways, I think it's also a good idea to read a couple pages in advance. Um, I wanted to see how the wiring diagram showed where pin one is on each of these and I followed, it doesn't tell you on the directions for in installing them, it just says keep them all the same. Well, I wanted pin one up on all of them. All ready to go. The one thing, um, you know, they have this really nice silk screening on this side. Um, I guess they want you to label your own jacks and tubes and stuff on this side. Uh, at least uh, that's all I've found so far. Um, okay, well. I got up in the middle of the night here on day two because I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to get this thing going. Um, anywho, still got some soldering to do on here and cleaning up, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's uh, pretty cool. This uh, picture is actually life size, so you can measure out your yellow wire to the picture. Pretty cool. Alrighty then, well there's my board done with all my leads. Cleaned up as much as I'm going to do. I'm afraid of cracking a solder if I try and clean up too much. I did go through and check every component from the solder lug and make sure that I also put everything where it's supposed to be. Um, so far so good. I'll keep you posted. So next on the list it says to start wiring up these transformers. Um, and it also says twist all your transformer wires of the same color. Okay gang, I got the circuit board in here, uh, which was a little bit of a chore, um, especially because one of the holes is right underneath the capacitor here, but I was just following the directions. 
Also, uh, you have a back plate here, and of course it shows the screws going through, and there were no holes in this. So, not a big deal, but I had to drill them, get them lined up and drill them. Uh, anyways, we're on the home stretch now. Here we are at the end of day two, I guess. Day one wasn't that long, but day two was a long one. I've had about enough. Got everything done but the input jacks. I'll tell you what. I felt like a dental hygienist. Picking around in there trying to get stuff where you can't get it. Tomorrow's another day. I made quite a mess here. So here we are at the beginning of day three and I've got some uh, input jacks that have some special attention to give to and I thought I'd do it out here instead of in here. Uh, anyways, this is going to be the end of it, at least the work in here, then I got to put the case together and everything, but uh, I'll keep you posted. Everything on this guy is done and checked to the best of my ability. The last thing I did was these input jacks. Uh, went through and visually inspected every socket. For any shorts or anything like that, uh, I guess at this point there is a power up test sequence without tubes. Then you put the tubes in and you check it out. Check voltages all over the board. They give you all those voltages. Uh, I'm telling you, just doing one of these makes you really appreciate the engineering, even though some of the circuit boards you see these days are so complex that I could never figure them out, but even this. Um, the simplicity and what you get out of it is overwhelming. I'm a little bit scared. It, it made it through the initial voltage test without any tubes. Um, I've got my speaker hooked up. Um, I got my voltages across the board here and of course all my tubes in and I'm, I'm I gotta admit I'm a little bit scared because there's a lot of money here a lot of time here and if I mess something up I can just all I don't know anyways here goes stand back well I don't see anything smoking that's a good sign My tubes look lively. Uh, not a whole lot at the preamp, but I'm not sure unless you have signal you're going to see anything there. Um, I don't see any excessive... I know I'm in the way here. Any excessive glowing on anything. So again, so far so good. So. Let's test some voltages here, real quick. Um, a high one, 386 volts right here. That's 421, 422, 340 here, 370. 
22 volts over here. I just can't get to that very good without touching anything. Uh, 19 volts right here. Of course, I hear the speaker clicking. Uh, I got 20. Next one over should be 53. I've got 53. Very good. Uh, next one over looks like 198. Two twenty, two twenty. Um, next one over one point four volt, or is that a hundred and? It's got the picture wire right in front. All I see is a one and something and a four. Anyways, uh, next one, hundred twenty-five, and I got nothing. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, that's supposed to be the 1.4. Sorry, this was 160. There's 180. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. Sort of hard to count. Let's go all the way to the end here where it says 2.1 volt. Uh, since I've got it on 1,000 volt DC, uh, I'd say that's good enough. Next one over says 125 volt, and I got 149. Got some uh, higher than what it's saying on here, but um, every component I put in here, uh, I put on the meter first, and there was quite a swing of ranging from the uh, resistors um, so I don't know if possibly that could be having something to do with it but uh, I'm going to turn this puppy off and that's it for now okay uh, they have one other test they wanted uh, you to do um, it's called a bump test, and uh, that uh, what you're supposed to do is like smack it with a wooden mallet or a rubber mallet, not real hard, or uh, drop it like an inch just to see if it makes any noise. Or uh, it, it's supposed to tell you if you have a, a cold solder or a bad solder. I have another test. It's called a guitar test. Let's see if it makes a noise. Oh, there's one thing wrong here. You do have to turn it on. Alrighty. And count to ten. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's a uh, 1964 Cleveland speaker. Um, that I pulled out of an old spinet organ. Uh, it appears that uh, it's not going to be able to handle this amp. Uh, I don't know if you heard it, but uh, big fart there, big fart. Anyways, I got sound. Um, that's all I wanted to know. I, I had this old case that um, I made about 10 years ago, and uh, this is some uh, old grill cloth from. Uh, been at Oregon, same place I got these speakers. Um, anyways, uh, I had to offset it a little bit because I had this brace in here. Anyways, it's great. Uh, who cares? Uh, the handle, by the way, is out in the uh, mailbox. I just can't stop long enough to go get it. Um, Anyways, at this point, I really have to go mow the yard, wash the dishes, feed the cat, um, and the chickens. Uh, so I, I have to stop. 